flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace on those who call the Lord with a pure heart. At face value, definitely looks like one must become monk-like. Live a life devoid of happiness in order to live a holy life here on earth and to enjoy eternal life with God in heaven. But what if I told you there was a way for you to have your cake and eat it? You can live that holy joyous life here on earth but also enjoy a far greater, far holier, far more joyous life in heaven as well. But trust me, I'm wasting your youth here on alcohol and vapes is the way to do it. Consequences. You may enjoy temporary happiness for a couple of hours before you're off puking and hungover regretting all of your previous life choices. Not only that, but remember, your body can't handle this forever. You've got up to about even 30 tops if you try and do all that. What then you're gonna do? Mope around as your organs slowly begin to buckle under the pressure which you put them through after all those waves and takeovers? Nah, that's not happiness and that's definitely not the joy which God created for you to enjoy. What on earth am I talking about? Isn't happiness and joy the same? No. Happiness is that short-lived feeling you have when you experience something which is pleasant. Good food, good clothes, trips, jokes, those can all give you happiness. But only that, never joy. Joy is more like that permanent state of happiness that one has, regardless of what happens around them. That kid who always smiles back at his bullies. Joy. The one who always never seems to lose his cool. Also joy. Disciples being glad to be brutally martyred in Jesus' name. It's all joy. All of this is joy. And this inexplicable and supernatural state of happiness can only be found in God. Don't trust me? Okay then, provide me with something which would never fail to give you happiness, even if you lacked it, or if it disappeared right this moment. If you lacked money, would you be happy looking at other people spend their money? So then, how could God possibly give us joy? What can we never lose and continue to look upon gladly as we retain our joy? Our eternal salvation. Jesus once and for all died on that cross to wash away the sins of all those who dare to surrender their desires to the God that grants eternal life. Our lies, our thefts, even those little cookies and undeclared midnight feasts, and our sin in general made this otherwise impossible. How could imperfect beings dare to enter let alone reside eternally in the presence of a perfectly holy God? We couldn't. Because we can never do anything to receive such a salvation such as this. What then could we possibly do to lose it? We never deserved it in the first place. And that's the whole point. We never deserved the gift to begin with. Whatever we do, we couldn't do anything to lose this gift other than refuse to accept the gift in the first place. That's what makes it special. That will never change. That's our eternal source of joy. As such, we will rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. It's through this joy that we can both live a life that isn't devoid of happiness, yet also live the righteous life of those entering into eternal life. You can have your cake and eat it. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10 lays out how any of us are even led to even want to live righteously in the first place. We accepted that gift and live righteous lives in gratitude. We don't choose not to drink or smoke or party solely because of the fear of hell. Rather, we do so because we have our eyes on something far greater, the heavenly riches. Our heart and joy isn't focused on earth where moth, vermin and horrible football destroy, but in the glorious kingdom of God. A great artist puts it like this. This is connected to joy. Don't make them oppose each other. Right, right. We make sacrifices in the gym so I can be a beast in the ring. Okay? Woo! We train ourselves for godliness so that we might flourish in God's world. Yes, but they say, boy, you sweat in battle so you don't have to bleed in war. Yo! I mean, you sweat in training so you don't have to bleed in a war. That's it, King. Yeah. That's it, bro. Yeah. Life is this way, bro, that we are not subbing our joy with sacrifice. We are protecting our joy with oh. sacrifice. Not seeking those cheeky nights out is a sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice that I, and God willing, you also are willing to make. This is how Christians are capable of willingly giving up time to pray and read the word, giving up money to aid those who won't repay you back and even giving up our very lives. This can be you to, so reach out and take this joy for yourself. 
Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment, either for the good or for the bad.